Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today visiting Mr. Joshi Shui, the author of a couple of fantastic books on Austrian pistols. And we're taking a look at some really interesting, uh, in this case, Hungarian firearms out of his collection. This is a Hungarian Model 33M, and it represents the transition from the well, the Steyr M95 pattern, the Hungarian 31M rifles. Uh, of course, when Hungary separated from the Austro-Hungarian Empire after World War I, they adopted their own set of designations. So what had been the Austro-Hungarian M95 became the Hungarian M31. Um, and then in 1935 they adopted a fundamentally different rifle, the 35M. Now, what happened here, the reason for the change, is during World War I, Hungarian forces had found that in cold weather the M95 pattern rifles, the Monlicher straight poles, could become really difficult to operate. The lubricating grease that they had in the guns would get really hard and stiff in cold weather, and the M95 can be a... it's a gun that requires a little bit of force to open in the best of conditions, and you put that in cold with gummed up grease, it could get almost impossible. And so the Hungarian army decided that it wanted a Turnbolt rifle instead of a straight pole. Specifically, they wanted to combine a Monlicher Schonauer Turnbolt action with the same magazine and loading system that they'd had on the M95. So that was continuing to use the M95, the Monlicher, uh, five round end block clips. At this point, the rifle was chambered for the 8x56 rimmed Monlicher cartridge, the same cartridge they would go on to use through World War II. And uh, the idea was, well, let's, let's combine the Turnbolt with our existing ammunition and magazine systems. The result was the 33M. This was the first trials pattern. Uh, the program obviously was developed in 1933. There were 50 of these rifles ordered, and they were delivered in January of 1935 and put into trials. So let's take a look at what they had for the 33M. This rifle has a gorgeous deep blue finish, but if you look at this you will recognize a number of elements. So of course it is a manual turn bolt action, but we have the familiar cocking piece from the M95 system, but uh, combined with a Mauser style flag safety, and of course the protruding single stack magazine with a hole in the bottom, so this feeds using the same five round end block clips. You would simply open the bolt, drop the clip in here, the whole thing clicks in, and when you load the final cartridge the empty clip falls out the bottom of the magazine. This is a little bit different from the M95 magazine, it's a little fancier, the manufacturing's uh, a little more complex. This, by the way, is the plunger, there's a coil spring in here that provides tension to the magazine spring right there, the follower spring. The bolt handle is hollow for weight reduction, it's got some nice checkering on the safety as well as the cocking piece. So this rifle was actually the subject of two patents by none other than Rudolf von Frommer. Uh, one of them is a mechanism in the front that prevents you uh, from cocking the rifle without the bolt head. It's kind of a redundant patent, um, not, not that hugely important of a feature, like it's kind of a self-solving problem. Uh, the more interesting patent to me is one on the sliding metal pieces here in the dust cover. You'll notice, of course, with a turn bolt system you have to have space to, op to lift the bolt handle to unlock the action, and this dust cover completely seals off any opening like that. Well, it does that by having a couple interlocking metal pieces that overlap and slide together so that you can open the action like so. Uh, that patent was filed in Austria, or in uh, Hungary in 1933, and Austria in 1934. The only place that the designation of the rifle is actually marked is here on top of the butt plate, and there's another really cool fancy element here. Notice there's a little hole with a button. Push down on that button. It's a little tight in this one and I can actually pivot the butt plate down, and inside we find a really uh, fancy cleaning kit. If we pull this out, <laughs> check that thing out, that's really cool. There is a specially shaped oil bottle with little brackets to hold a three-piece segmented cleaning rod. 
this unscrews. Unscrews a lot. And you have, I won't pull it out here to get the bristles all bent up, but you have an oiler brush in there in your oil container, your oil reservoir. And then that just slides right back into the buttstock. And we can close that back up. The rear sight is a tangent sight graduated out to 2000 meters. Uh, interestingly, they put the serial number on the underside of the rear sight. Uh, this particular gun is serial number 34. They actually put that serial number in kind of weird places. It's here on the front of the barrel band. It's also here on the front of the end cap and the stacking rod and on the front of the, the front sight cover. And it's actually on the inside of the butt plate. Um, I'll leave you to believe me on that one. This was designed with a nice fully protected barleycorn style front sight and the exact same sort of stacking rod that was on the M95 rifles and carbines. And then it adopts the basically the upgrade or the conversion that was made to a lot of the M95 carbines, uh, giving them sling swivels on both the side and the bottom of the rifle. So we have a dual sling swivel setup on the front here. And then there's a sling swivel on the bottom on the back. And then for the side sling swivel, they inletted it into the side of the stock, which is much more comfortable than the way the M95 carbines did it, which was to put a big protruding sling swivel right here, where if you are left-handed, it's right under your grip and really annoying. Also worth pointing out that this has the split stock that would be used, or not exactly the same, but the same concept that would be used on the 35M. Now I want to show you this incredibly minute, fragile dust cover assembly. To take the bolt out, this, well we have to open it first, this is our bolt release. You just hold that up and the bolt comes right out the back of the gun. In order to take the dust cover off, we're just going to pull the striker back, lock it out to the side, and then we can rotate this down. Now we've got our two little metal pieces here. This one, let's see, let's lift this up. This one slides off that way, and then this one slides off the front. And in order to guide this, there are two little, just minuscule tabs on that. Oh, and of course, more serial numbers. Yeah, you can only imagine how quickly these pieces will be bent, broken, and lost, probably all simultaneously, by troops in the field. But when it is put together, it is that overlap of these pieces going that way and those two going that way that lock it around the bolt, and then it can slide open and shut. There we go, like that. There were a couple problems that were found in the trials of this rifle. In general, it worked extremely well, possibly almost too well when we look at the differences between this and what was adopted shortly hereafter as the 35M. Uh, the couple of specific problems, one was this handguard that only goes halfway down the barrel. Apparently when you did a bunch of shooting and then went to attach a bayonet, um, you'd burn your hand on the barrel, you know, you're holding the barrel out here and trying to put on a bayonet. Uh, that was a problem, and so the 35M actually has a handguard that runs the whole length all the way out to the nose cap to fix that. Apparently the other problem was the company manufacturing these wanted to buy a lot of its material from foreign sources outside Hungary, the steel, the wood, that sort of thing. And the Hungarian defense ministry really wasn't a big fan. They wanted all this stuff to be sourced from within Hungary for economic reasons and for reasons of military self-sufficiency. I don't have any details on how that was cleared up for the 35M, but one can presume that it was. Now the more fundamental problem is this rifle is loaded with really fancy little features, things that were both too fragile and too expensive to put into the full production gun that they wanted to buy like 100,000 examples of. And so what we'll see with the 35M is the same basic system, a Moniker Schonauer turn bolt action, the M95 pattern magazine and clip, but 
dramatically simplified. The folding plate thing, gone. The really fancy oiler bottle and integrated cleaning rod holder in the buttstock, gone. The dust cover, gone. Um, the, some of the fanciness in the front sight, uh, some of the really detailed elements, the, the you know, fancy um, shaping of the front of the magazine, all that was significantly simplified to reduce the cost of what would be the 35M. So um, I do have a video on the 35M, if you're interested in that. Uh, I will link to it at the end of this video. I think they're a pretty cool rifle, this combination of the, the Monlicker uh, N-block clip with the really quite potent 8x56 ammunition and a turnbolt action. So 35M would serve Hungarian forces through much of World War II. It would also serve as the basis for the 43M and the German, um, essentially the German production version of the 43M, where they took the same rifle and converted it to a Mauser magazine in 7.92 by 57 millimeter. So uh, the basis for a whole series of interesting guns. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. A big thanks to Mr. Shuey for access to this probably one-of-a-kind surviving example of a 33M. If you are interested in particular in, Hungar in Austrian and Austro-Hungarian uh, automatic pistols and early mechanical pistols and some really interesting stuff, I strongly suggest checking out his books. They are in German, uh, but even if you don't speak German, well worth it to flip through and admire. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.